Hi and welcome to a new video here on my channel. Originally I didn't even plan to make a video about this new CPU. We're talking about the Core i9-9980XE which is the base info refresh, so the new 18 core CPU for X299 platform. And I've been talking to Steve from Gamers Nexus recently quite a lot about this CPU because he asked me if I can validate his testing. He was testing his 9980XE basically um, temperatures and also power consumption and he saw some very high temperatures and he asked me if I saw the same. At this point I didn't even test my CPU because honestly after the Intel presentation of the 9900K where they also showed the 28 core and also the base info refresh, so 9980XE, Intel said that the 9980XE is just a soldered 7980XE. So thinking about that I can take a 7980XE and put liquid metal on there I think I would have the same CPU, right? So it was not really interesting for me to test this. But then Steve came around the corner, asked about temperatures and also power consumption. Then I figured, okay, here we are again, new CPU, and we are going to delete the CPU, obviously. But before we do that, we will take a look at some numbers of power consumption and temperatures. Switching over to my system, you can see on top of CPU-Z that my 9980XE is detected as i9-7980XE, which is <laughs> very funny, I think, because it's basically the same CPU. If we check mainboard, you can see I'm using the Rampage 6 Apex memory, nothing special here, it's just 2666 memory modules, um, crucial, crucial ballistics, RGB memory stuff, so um, nothing was really necessary for this video, so I just used some random memory sticks. You can also see the ring ratio, cache, cache ratio is stock, so it's 2400 megahertz on the cache. We can just quickly perform one Cinebench run, just so you see what the performance looks like, how fast it is. You cannot argue with the performance of an 18 core from Intel. That's, there is no discussion about the performance because 4,400 points um, is, is just absolutely massive. And don't come around the corner with, uh, but my Threadripper 32 core can have even more points, of course. It can have even more points, especially when you overclock it. But the single core performance of a Threadripper can nowhere compete with the 18 core from Intel. So the 18 core, the 9980XE, is in my books still top of the top. It's still in my books much better than a 32 core Threadripper. You can hate as much as you want, but that's the truth. Because if you use the CPU not only for rendering, but also for gaming, which I assume most of the people do, then the CPU is simply better. Of course, if you're just using it for rendering 24-7, if you need as many cores as possible, of course the Threadripper will be better, there's no discussion about that. But performance of the, 19, uh, of the 9980XE is simply insane. We can just rerun and take a look at the temperatures in core temp, which is also very interesting, because if we take a look at a core zero, maximum temperature now is 68, and if we take a look, for example, at, oh, let's see, core 12, we have 87 degrees Celsius, so it's almost, 20 degrees Celsius core temperature delta already just running Cinebench, which is a fairly light load. And also the temperatures are not really bad for the moment if we just perform two Cinebench runs. Talking about the cooling, we have kind of a custom water cooling loop. It's not a strong loop though. So we have a um, EK Supremacy Evo CPU block, which is I think fairly strong. Then we have a DDC pump with reservoir on top and we have a 240 um, radiator with Corsair fans. Of course, a 240 radiator is not really strong, um, especially for a custom water cooling loop. You would rather go for like a 480, I think, or have like two 280s or something like this, depending on what kind of case you're using. But I wanted to have something that can also be compared to a very strong AIO. So for example, let's say you have a 360 AIO, a 280 AIO. I think it's kind of comparable to what we have here. So if we run Prime95 now, version 26.6, do 12.12 minimum size, so it's non-ABX Prime, so it's not as heavy as running ABX Blender, whatever, so it's, it's still okay, I think. But if we take a look at the temperatures, the temperatures are getting interesting really quickly, especially because the power consumption is simply insane. I'm not sure if you can see it on the Thor. Thor PSU is currently reading 666 watt. What a lovely number. Then we have the current clamp, 
which is reading about 44 amps. So that has to be something like 520 watt because that's reading on the 12 volt rail. Keep in mind that this is measured before the VRMs. So obviously we have the switching losses across the VRM. So not sure what the switching losses across the VRM here are, but I would assume something like 50, 60 watt probably. So the pure CPU power consumption must be something like 450 to 470 watt roughly, which is still enormously high. So if we just keep in mind that we have to kind of cool and remove 450 watt with this poor 240 radiator, obviously the temperatures are going to be bad. And if we switch back to core temp, it has just been two minutes. It's not much. If we take a look at the core two or for example, core 12, we already have 97 degrees Celsius. And again, core zero is very low compared to the others. So it's 20 degrees Celsius or 20 Kelvin um, delta between the hot and the coldest core. We also have a strange core eight in between, which is then also 76. What I was thinking is that core zero and core eight are maybe the two cores at the bottom and then the other ones are uh, going up, so maybe the center cores are the, are the highest or the hottest cores. I'm not sure what um, the naming scheme here is or how they are named. If there is even a naming scheme behind the numbers, I'm not really sure. But if we check now, it has been running for three minutes and it's already hitting above 100 degrees Celsius. So the CPUs are running really, really, really hot. The question is also, why is there such a massive temperature delta between the cores we have now 22 degrees Celsius between the coldest and the hottest core, which is a lot, which is something I did not expect from a soldered CPU. I mean, we'd learned from the 9900K that even a soldered CPU can be really hot, even though the 9900K, it, it was not just purely because it's soldered, right? Soldering is not bad, don't get me wrong here. But it was also because the die was thicker. When you grinded down the die, we saw some benefits. On the 9980XE, on the other hand, I think the chip thickness is exactly the same as before. So 7980XE was already thicker than the 8700K. So I'm not sure what the reason for this insane temperature is. Um, I mean, obviously 4.6 gigahertz at 1.2 volt is quite a lot. If it, was, if it was possible, I would use a lot lower core voltage because typically I was using on a 7980XE mostly something between 1.15 and 1.2 volt because everything above is just getting way too warm and my CPU needs the voltage. So I tested the CPU with lower voltages and it crashes. So the minimum voltage it required for Cinebench R15 to run 4.6 was 1.17 volt. And to pass Prime95 for one hour, it takes 1.2 volt. So obviously we need some additional voltage, which then consumes, consumes even more power. And now you can see we're hitting 105, 104 degrees Celsius on the course. And this is the point where the CPU eventually then will start to throttle. So if you're planning to get a 9980XE, think of your cooling solution, make sure you have something really strong. Now I will unmount this CPU and we will put it in the Daily Dimate X. See if the CPU can survive deleting. So my original plan was that I'm standing here and I will present some very nice footage of deleting the CPU, show how I removed the indium solder, very similar to what I did on the 9900K or the previous AMD CPUs, which were soldered, then apply liquid metal, do again some testing, maybe even try direct dye because I even um, brought a direct dye frame with me to test if we can maybe somehow reduce the delta between the cores. If you maybe saw the video from Steve from Gamers Nexus, you should be aware that the delta across the cores also on his CPUs are absolutely massive. So I thought it would be a way to maybe run direct die and reduce the delta this way, but things turned out differently. So this is the first try. It's a Deli Dimate X and the screw, I have to say the screw is made in Germany. It's proper quality and you can see the screw is bent. So I tried it yesterday evening and the force I needed to delete the CPU or when I tried it was absolutely massive. I had to turn the screw so hard that it bent. And even then the CPU was still together. It was still one piece. I could not remove the heat spreader. So I thought, okay, let me grab another one. So grabbed another Dell Dimate X. It's actually one of my prototypes which was using a different thread size. So it's a little bit stronger, which is not necessary for the typical CPUs, which are not soldered, but maybe I thought in this case it's necessary. 
So tried it again with this stellidimate, it worked. I still had to apply a massive force. So I put the CPU in the stellidimate X, pushed from one side a little bit, turned it around, pushed from the other side, which is something you usually have to do with soldered CPUs because you have to use metal fatigue kind of kind of to loosen the indium solder otherwise you cannot really remove it unless you heat up the CPU which is something I really want to avoid because especially on those CPUs when you have those SMB components the funny SMB components we will talk about them in a second if you have them close to the die and you have the liquid indium flowing off the CPU while you're deleting it's very common or very easy that the indium then covers the SMD components and you have to remove it afterwards very carefully. So I'm not really a friend of that in case you're wondering why I did not heat up the CPU. So that's the CPU. I mean, from your perspective now, it looks fine. But if you zoom in, we can see that all the SMD components or let's say at least 50% of the SMD components are gone. And if I put the CPU back in the socket, which I just tried, it just shows zero, zero. So for the moment, this looks like a great way to lose 2000 euros. So if you're maybe getting a 9980XE and you're thinking, hey, thermals don't look great. Let me grab a Delete I made X and delete the CPU. Very bad idea. Don't do it. Really don't do it. The problem here is that, as I said before, CPU is now soldered. So it means that the heat spreader will be thinner compared to the previous Skylake X, mainly because the indium solder sheet has to be thicker, which is obvious. Uh, Steve from Gamers Nexus also explained that. So this means the dimensions of the heat spreader changed with which is something I already kind of expected and I was worried about that before that it would be similar to Broadwell E because back in the days with Broadwell E the risk of deleting a CPU was extremely high. It's the same again here we have those edges of the heat spreader and they're so close to the SMD components on the chip that if you push them by one millimeter in any direction, you remove it either from the one, one side or from the other side. So deleting this chip is absolutely not recommended. So on the bottom side of the CPU, where you have approximately 10 of those very small and tiny SMD caps, all of them are gone. And on the top side, we have a bit bigger um, SMD components, also caps and also some resistors. And they're also gone, like 50% of them. I found most of them on my table, luckily, but not all of them. So some are still missing. Not sure if I dropped them somewhere on the floor. And they're extremely tiny, so it's not so easy to put them back on. I'm actually quite confident that I can get this CPU back up and running. I did that several times, for example, on a 7900X or a 7980XE. Some of the chips I got back from customers or also from some friends had damaged SMD components. So I replaced some of those very tiny SMD resistors or SMD caps. So I'm kind of used to doing that to repair those chips, but it takes an enormous amount of time, especially the very tiny ones. If I just replace two, sometimes it took me up to one hour to do that. And now that I have, I don't know, like 10, 15 missing, it would probably take me one full afternoon. I don't have time for that now. I also don't have the equipment for here now because I will need my USB microscope and all this kind of equipment. So. Unfortunately, I'm not able to present any kind of data about the deleted CPU, so applying liquid metal and all this kind of stuff. If I can get the CPU back and running, of course we will do that. So that's it for now. If you're thinking about deleting your Skylake X refresh, don't do it, just live with it. Just live with the fact that those CPUs are running quite warm. My personal recommendation would be, if you want to get an 18 core Skylake X, I would rather go for a 7980XE, maybe even a used one, maybe a used and deleted CPU that already has liquid metal on there for overclocking purpose. Looks better in my eyes. It's probably also cheaper because the new CPUs are out might be the better solution. Let me know what you think about the 9980XE. Let me know what you think about ruining a 2000 euro CPU. Thanks and see you soon.